I'm sure that by now most people know what a Roku is. It's a great little streaming player that will enable you to do away with your cable or satellite TV. There are many channels that come free with the Roku, and there's many that you can purchase. Most of the movie channels do have commercials. I have an Amazon Prime membership, which is $79 a year, and it also includes free two-day shipping on most of their merchandise. Amazon Prime comes with a free trial, and also their movies are commercial free. You can also rent movies or purchase movies. I also have Netflix, and it also comes with a free trial, and it is $7.99 a month. I'll have to admit that I was a little skeptical at first of how Roku works, and I was a little skeptical of uh, Netflix and Amazon Prime, but I am extremely satisfied. There is no time lost in buffering. All the movies play perfectly, just as if you were playing a DVD. And something that was very impressive to me is that when you're watching a movie and you stop it and you go back later in the day to watch it again, it will resume exactly where it stopped. I will probably eventually drop my satellite TV because there's plenty of cartoons for the grandkids to watch on Amazon Prime and on Netflix. I'm not happy with satellite TV because there's so many programs on there that are sales programs and jump programs that I care nothing about. And the price just keeps getting higher and higher with every bill. As you see here, this Roku is very small. It's very impressive how well it works to be so little. Now Roku says that you don't need a computer, and you don't, but you will have to have a modem and a router. Shown here are the inputs and outputs, but what I didn't show is a USB connection to where you could use a thumb drive or a flash drive to uh, play a movie or photos. Also included is a small DC transformer that plugs into DC in. The provided RCA cables plug into the AV out. Here's the long RCA cable and adapter jack that are included. Before I get into how to wire your house with RCA cables, I wanted to show you this little Belkin RF modulator that I purchased. The Roku plugs into this and enables you to use your existing coaxial cable throughout your house. I have not used this or tried this yet since I'm going to wire my house for RCA. If you've completely done away with your satellite TV, this is an option and you may want to go this route to use the existing cable. Computer Cable Store is the only site that I found online that would let me buy 250 feet of this special shielded cable instead of buying a thousand foot roll. I also purchased the RCA wall plates and the RCA cables I needed. I have no vested interest, but I do highly recommend Computer Cable Store and Tony. I'm extremely satisfied with their service. I need to mention this. I used about 175 feet of this shielded cable in wiring these RCA plates. My home is fairly small. My Roku is located in the center of my home. The remote with a Roku works excellent. It triggers the TV from any position in the house. It works by radio frequency, if I'm not mistaken, which is a lot better than what most remotes use. But if you run an extremely long run of this cable, you may have to have a signal booster. If you have a large home and a lot of these RCA outlets, you may get a ghost appearance on a video, a ghost image. So just bear that in mind. This, to my knowledge, will work fine up to maybe 200 feet, maybe longer. But I just want to mention that just in case. I cannot tell that my signal strength has degraded any at all over this roughly 200 foot run. But you can Google that and do some research on it. I don't know how long 
a run of this cable you can have before your signal would start to dissipate. Each wall in your home, as you probably know, is made of 2 befores and each wall has a top plate and a bottom plate, a 2 before. Shown here in this photo, you can see the bottom of the wall. This is taken from my basement. The bottom plate, the 2 before, is shown between the two blue arrows. And the hole drilled that I'm going to run my cable through is right in the center of that bottom plate which means that the hole is right between the two pieces of sheetrock that compose the wall above this photo. This will go much easier for you if you try to locate the box that you're going to install maybe close to a receptacle you already have in your wall because there'll already be a hole drilled for that electrical wire and you can just run your cable right through that same hole making it a heck of a lot easier. If your basement is finished, then you'll have no other way of doing this other than going into the attic and going down through the top plate. Again, you could go through an already drilled hole where an electrical wire goes to an outlet down in the wall. If you have to drill a hole through the top plate or bottom plate, then you'll have to measure carefully from some reference point. And by that I mean the reference point maybe being a wire that's already there for a receptacle. Just remember that all wires in your attic or in your basement are going to be going through top or bottom plates. If you cut a hole in the wall that isn't near another receptacle, you'll have to cut a new hole with, between the two two before studs and then you're going to have to measure precisely from where that hole is. So when you go in the attic or the basement, again measuring from some reference point, you'll have to drill your hole. You can use a flashlight and a small mirror like a dental mirror to look down inside the wall after you've cut your opening to see where your hole is you've drilled through the bottom plate. Or if you're coming down from the top plate, the weight of the wire makes it go a lot better. You need to have a small loop of wire at the end of your cable where you can hook it with a coat hanger. Either do that by taking two of the six leads and soldering them together making a loop or use a piece of coat hanger taped to the cable and make a small loop or hook in it. This by far is the hardest part of this job and also the hardest to explain on how to do. Unless your RCA plate is at the end of the run as it was in my basement, You'll actually have two cables, maybe even three, to hook to each RCA connector because one cable has to go on to the next RCA connector, if you follow. So bear that in mind when you're dropping wires down from the attic or up through the basement. More likely, you're going to have two complete cable assemblies to solder onto the back of that RCA plate to go on to another RCA plate. Okay, let's get started with some of the tools you'll need. Shown here is a wire stripper, which really comes in handy. You can use a pocket knife or a razor blade, but it's much harder. Also shown is a sheetrock or drywall saw. If you don't have a drywall saw, you could improvise by using a hacksaw blade with a rag wrapped around it. That would work. You will need a soldering iron, in this case a soldering gun, which is almost too large for this kind of work. You'll also need rosin core solder. If you don't have soldering skills or the equipment, you can also order these plates with screw type connectors. This is a stud finder. Not to be confused with a girl going into a singles bar, this is a different kind of stud finder. Now, if you don't have a stud finder, not to worry. Another way of doing this is by tapping on the wall between the studs, which are 16 inches apart. The closer you tap to a stud, the more solid the sound will be. And if you make a mistake, not to worry, because I'm going to make a video on how to repair drywall. 